Do you want to learn how to orchestrate? You gotta check out this video. Hi, this is Sam. I hope you're doing really well. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already, why not subscribe? You know, when you start composing on a DAW, you might think, how do you orchestrate? How do you take all these instruments in an orchestra and make them sound good? What instruments sound good together? What chords do I make with different instruments? What variations, what articulations are there? What are the ranges? It's a lot of stuff. So let's talk about all the things you can do to actually improve your orchestration. Now, the most obvious thing is to actually take a course or go to university. But immediately you might think, ooh, university, that's quite expensive. Well, I agree. I just want to say the good things about university, if you're fortunate enough to do that. You get to study just that topic for whatever, three or four years, and you really have a lot of good staff around you and people, friends who know what they're doing. You get into a lot of projects. You probably will work with a real orchestra, and you probably will get a fantastic network and doorways to continue. So the best thing that a university really offers is, I would say, connections and material. The bad side, it costs a lot of freaking money. <laughs> it's, it's way too expensive nowadays. But I'm not saying universities are bad, but that's one option. Another thing is to actually get your own teacher. And if you really find a teacher you really admire, that might be a fantastic trick. You know, uh, even though it costs money to hire a teacher, it costs way less than tuition for university. And you might say, well, I don't get a title or diploma and all that. Well, in music, who cares? Really, if you can create good music, that's all you need. You don't need diplomas. And a good teacher can also be a doorway to get out in the world and get opportunities. And the third way, if you can't find a really good teacher, is to look online. There are actually a lot of courses out there that are quite decent. Now, the tricky thing is to know which one is good. Now, most of these people who have courses, they often have a YouTube channel as well. So why don't check out how they do their channels uh, and see if that style fits you. Now, if you feel like, sorry, dude, I've spent all my money on the computer and all the libraries, I don't have any cash left or I just don't want to work with these guys, then there are some tricks that I will show you. Now, the first trick I want to show you is very simple. It's kind of a duh. It's listen to music. Yeah, you knew that already. But listen to it in a different way. I will show you what I mean. Okay, so I have loaded up one of my own songs. I do want to say that it's not so good to use your own songs, but just because of YouTube copyright problems uh, I've used my own so I don't get in trouble but obviously you want to use other songs when you do this what I've done here is that I have just basically divided this song into parts intro repetition B section bridge main theme bridge with variation and outro now these names are completely arbitrary you can put up any names you like that's the cool thing about it it just has to make sense to you and you don't have to use the formal correct within quotation marks uh, labels, okay? So when I've done that, I listen to the song and I put these parts up. I'll go to uh, any program that I can, you know, write things down or make it into cells that I have here. And you see, I've labeled these cells the same as the parts. Okay, so let's listen to the first part here. Yeah, the name of this song is a bit silly. Hans Room. If you didn't know, Zimmer means room in German. Anyway, so intro, here we have it. I have put description, instrumentation, feeling and energy. And now I'm just going to fill it in. And I fill in whatever makes sense to me. So description, what I feel is happening here. Well, I have a, a slow soaring melody. Yeah. And underlying 
Austin Auto almost. Not really, but almost. Uh, what instrumentation? Violins 1 and Violins 2. Feeling. So you have to just put yourself into the music. What do you actually feel when you hear this? And this is still just up to you. Maybe somebody else feels something entirely different. Who cares? It's your interpretation. It's your analysis. So what I feel? I feel sad, lonely, <laughs> and uh, dramatic, maybe. Yeah? Well, maybe dramatic goes for energy. But energy, I would say dark slow yeah maybe there are more words go ahead write as much as you want as long as you can sort of remember the feeling okay so you go on do the same with repetition b section bridge main theme and so on what's the point of this well the point is to analyze other people's music so that you become better at understanding what's going on and you can try to do the same thing yourself if you only have this little uh sheet of paper here with your descriptions you're not copying notes you're not copying meter you're not copying the same thing you're just copying a concept you can use completely other instruments if you want to you can use a different rhythm and especially if you're new to this this is really good to start to listen a little bit deeper what is actually happening what instruments do i actually hear you know sometimes we get a a, a superficial sensation of the song we don't really know what's going on but listening a little bit deeper we see oh yeah that instrument is also there hmm? and after done this a few times you probably will start to add your own flavor you would realize hey wait a minute i actually like to do it this way instead so find songs that you really like or songs that you want to compose similar to start to analyze them and then pull them up next time and write a piece of music that fits that analysis. Now, I wanted to mention that obviously going to see real life performances is key because you will get a very good understanding of the sounds. You will see what they're doing as well. Now, I know in Corona times, who knows when <laughs> the next time you will be able to go to a concert. But let's hope it happens soon and let's hope the vaccine comes soon. Uh, when you get the chance to do so, also think about, you might not just have to pay for a concert. Maybe you can actually sit in at rehearsals. Maybe if you can uh, offer them a favor, I don't know, maybe you can help them out in some way. Or bring coffee or help out in any way. You might be able to sit in because that is absolutely valuable. Another great thing is to study sheet music. But before you say, stop, that sounds really boring. Please hear me out. This is how you do it. Go to your web browser and type in free scores.com there we go and you will land on this page now feel free to explore but what i would do is to go to instrumentations and then choose something that fits you i'm gonna try i'm gonna start with this string quartet and i'm also gonna choose classical now obviously there are other epochs other areas you can choose so uh let's see Haydn, that might be cool. Uh, you can listen to some of them, not always, but I know this one. So I'm going to download this one. And here you go. Here's String Quartet Opus 1, number 1, first movement. Okay. So what you could do is to just look at the score, but maybe even more fun is to open Spotify or YouTube, find this song and listen to it while you read the music. This really makes a difference because you actually see what each, each instrument is doing. So that's what I would recommend you to start with. But even better is to actually write at least the beginning part or just a small section of the song in your DW. This is twofold because first you will get even more a deeper understanding of what's actually going on and you will learn how to use your instrument because sometimes you have to solve a problem how will i get this sound on my instrument let's look at the song so here i have actually created uh, the four parts with the cinematic string solo strings let's see what it sounds like while we look at the score at the same time <laughs> Thank you. 
So there you have it. This is an excellent way to understand music. And don't be afraid to look at older uh, genres. I'm not saying that classical or Baroque or anything is sort of better music, but I would say that classical music is sometimes an easier way to understand because harmony wasn't so advanced. The orchestras weren't that enormous and there weren't that many advanced articulations. So go ahead, try uh, romantic music and later if you want to. But uh, classical music is an excellent way to understand how to orchestrate. It's really, really clear and Mozart and Beethoven and particularly I even Haydn uh, really made great use of the instruments. You know, in fact, let's try another one. I'm gonna download another one. Okay, I downloaded another one just to try and this is Mozart's Overture to the Marriage of Figaro. A great opera, by the way. Uh, I really like this intro. It's got a really fast uh, bassoon here in the beginning and then it's got typical Mozart all in kind of a music and it's very typical for the classical area as well. So let's see what this sounds like after I've made it in my DAW. Yes, that sounded pretty good, actually. Uh, again, I want to remind you, the point is not to just try to go for the most realistic sound. Maybe you don't have a library that fits a certain thing and you can't get it done. The point is actually learning what's going on, like really looking. What, what are the violins doing here and how do they match with the brass and whatever? Now, it's also interesting, of course, to try to make it sound good because you will learn uh, how your instruments work. But I would focus mostly on what is happening. Now, another thing you can do is obviously make the whole song, a whole cover. And there are quite a few YouTubers who had had quite a career doing that. Another way you can learn about orchestration is to actually do what I call grooves. I'll show you what I mean. So here I have recorded a groove that I found somewhere on the internet. It sounds like this. Now, obviously, you could do the whole thing, but it's quite interesting to just try to create that little groove that could be sort of a loop. Okay, so I've done so. I hear that there are some high strings in here. So let's listen to that. Yep, some string staccato. Yes, I also hear a clarinet there, different color. Turn to get there and the flutes in the beginning and the end. And some low strings for bass. And then we have some bells and piano as well. Let's see. More or less. And the original sounds like this. And my version. So yeah, it's not exactly the same at all. There are different bells, different sounds, and you can mix it the way you want it. But what you'll learn here is to create a groove, which is very useful. You could uh, create this groove later without instruments, and you also have more knowledge of what is possible and what you can do with your own instruments. The last thing I want to show you is to create simple songs and try to orchestrate from your piano. So start with the piano, like simple chords, and then just try to make an idea out of that. It obviously helps if you have your template set up correctly. Here I have a very simple piano track with some simple chords. Okay, when you do this, I encourage you to write more music, but it could be this short just to get your ideas out. So out of this, I made this. Very simple here. I actually added a melody so we can see what it sounds like if I remove that melody. I think it's a flute and a bow. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. sorry. So in this case, I made quite a simple orchestration. It's just basically the the violin, cello, and violas basically doing a chord pattern staccato, and then I added melody with violins, flute, oboe, and some metals here. Okay. So the way I work here is that I just created some simple chords and the piano doesn't have to be advanced. It can just simply be block chords and maybe melody on top if you want. And then you just write to whatever you feel like. And here it's very good to have a template again, which I had shown in another video, because then you got all the instruments in front of you and you can just play with your heart's content and see what you can come up with. Because really, try whatever, try anything. Who knows what's right? You might come up with some new idea that nobody ever thought about. So by trying and just see whatever comes up, even if you don't have any theory or know what to do, you will learn. You will see what works together. Those are all my tips for learning how to orchestrate. I do want to point out one more time that it is not necessary to go to university or take a very expensive course. It can be really helpful if you have the means, but it's not necessary. There is enough material on YouTube and if you practice following these tips, or maybe other tips that you have learned, you will improve. Practice will get you there. So try one of these examples I've shown you and see what you can come up with. I would love to hear your music, actually. Maybe post something that you have done. Hey, if you like these videos, why not subscribe? You will get more tips on how you can become creative or how to learn how to orchestrate. And hit that bell button as well if you want to get notified. And maybe hit the like button as well. Okay. Until next time, I hope you have a great time. Take care.